Hey there, greetings again YouTube. Hi there again dear lovely viewer. We're talking about the dangers of microwave ovens part two. Yeah, there's our little friend here. So let's just kind of move him out of the way. So you've got to see that anytime you see that screaming skull, you know that something is potentially dangerous. Now, I've already gone to the extent and the trouble of removing the top panel and side panels of this oven just to save a bit of time. But it's okay because this thing is not plugged in and even if it was plugged in it wouldn't work anyway. I blew the ends of the pins off in another experiment so it's already dead. As you can see, it's missing two pins. Now, that actually also killed the microwave oven as well. But I've already taken the liberty to get this thing naked. Let's have a look inside and see immediately what the issues are with this. Sort of that up there. And there we go. Let's try and zoom in a bit. In fact, that might not work. We might need to hold that thing up there like so. So you can see all the dangerous goodies in there. And we're going to use our insulated screwdriver here. I really should find something to prop that up on. Let's just see if a cardboard box will hold that. Ah, there we go. Could I see? We can zoom out a bit now, and you'll see that I have the thing on its side. Now, just for safety, because I'm not happy uh, with leaving that like that, because there is still a danger. I mean, not here because I live alone, but there is still a danger. Uh, I suppose even if in my moment of madness I tried to find a way of plugging that in and did something, well, that would be bad. So what I'm going to do anyway, let's just sort of try and adjust this camera a bit. There we go. So you can sort of see what I'm going to be doing at the top. Because what I'm going to do, let's drop that down. Now you can see at the top. I'm going to start by removing that power cord. As you can see here. Let's sort of zoom in and get the, uh, the power cable disconnected. There we are. And I'm going to do that like this. In fact, I might just use a pair of grippers on that. Now, again, don't be doing this yourself because, I mean, the, there's a risk of hurting yourself through electrocution. And of course, if you cut yourself open, that's not going to be very nice either. So, don't be doing this. Leave this stuff to me. Let's just get rid of that. Put that out of there. And we've made that oven isolated from any sort of mains supply. There we are, so that's the plug and the other end is now isolated. We do that because obviously if that plug was still any good and somebody plugged that in, well that would be terrible. Let's just move that out actually, get that into our scrap pile over there go and now we can put that box back and we'll discuss about these problems there we go Let's just turn the box away excellent and that's a pretty good view inside it now pretty good all right what we can now see let's just in fact let's get rid of that non-insulated one that's dangerous i'm just going to move that let's just lob it across over there let's get it out of the way Right, 
The problem is, as we said before, if this thing was plugged in and you came into contact with those, well, that's your, that's your live supply in. We discussed this in part one. If you short those out, which you could quite easily do with a screwdriver blade or a finger, well, then you're dead, basically, or you're at least going to get a fairly substantial bang. On this side, over here, you can see at the back end of that, this is the high voltage output side. We know it is because that goes into that HV capacitor. Straight away, as I highlighted before, there's an exposed terminal there. That's exposed. If you were to touch that with your finger, then you're dead, basically put. So, yeah, you don't want to ever be doing that. <coughs> now, shorting these out on that capacitor, there is a couple of ways that can be done. You can do it from up the top end here and short it. Or you can do it from down the bottom. I recommend shorting it wherever's safest. Now what you don't want to be doing is playing around. Let's just sort of move that up. Just so you can see what I was fiddling around with was that. That's the input there for the magnetron. You don't want to be playing around with that. Right. You could potentially, if you wanted, short it there. Although I really wouldn't, I'd do it from down here, if possible. Now with this one, it might not be. And that screwdriver might be a bit too fat to get in there. Does, however look like there is a bleeder resistor across that but I'm I'm not entirely convinced that that's exactly safe now there is a couple of ways that we can do this safely and what would I want to be using well I can use crocodile clips on this and a length of thicker insulated wire or indeed a screwdriver with a longer exposed blade. Now what we can do as long as it's an insulated one. I mean I'm I'm almost certain, I mean even theoretically a pair of pliers that are insulated will also work basically you don't want to be using both hands but you get the point you're just bridging that from the shell or whatever or across both terminals there now this one I've already done I've already done this so I know that it's rendered safe you don't want to be playing around with this at all yourself. Now, this is not a stripped down guide for anybody because unfortunately all microwave ovens are different. You see, every single one of these are going to vary from make a model. But I can at least give you some insight to how to do it safely. And we're going to be using a pair of insulated VDE grips. Now for this, what I am also going to do is I'm going to put on a second glove over my left hand at least. I probably might also. That's just obviously to give myself a little bit more electrical resistance. Because obviously what I don't want is anything being potentially conducted through me. I mean, I should also really have uh, another glove on as well. Uh, where did I put that other one? It was around here somewhere. 
There we are. Well, we'll just have to use that one. It's fine. They are slightly different colours, but it'll do for the purposes of this. Now what we're going to do is very safely, I'm going to disconnect at the top here, that connector, as we can see, that goes down for our HV capacitor and we're going to move that right out the way. And we'll disconnect the second one. And again, we've got our gloves on as well, so we're making sure we're insulated. Now, what we have, as you can see there, flapping around, are two exposed, potentially live wires. Now, all we're going to do is taking a second pair of thin nose pliers, just connect them together. Is it shorting out? No, there's nothing there. Now, of course, that also, that, the one that I'm holding here, that goes to the capacitor. This one, obviously, anyway, that goes to the transformer. But we do have here another spade connector on the transformer. So I've got hold of this one nice and safe. This one's for a high voltage cap. Let me just get in there a little bit. So let's just zoom out a bit so you can see a bit more. There we are, as you can see. So that's for our high voltage capacitor. Now we have the other side of that down here. And all I want to do, obviously, is with this, I'm using thin nose pliers. I shouldn't be resting my arm on that anyway because that could be bad. So I'm going to take my second pair and I'm going to disconnect the other end of that capacitor there. Now theoretically you can short those two together. Now what I should really be wearing, I just want to keep hold of that end, I should really be wearing safety glasses and so I'm just going to get those on now. Just in case that does go bang and anything comes off. It shouldn't because it's already discharged and dead. There we are. So that, I'm relatively certain, is fine. Now what we can do is start to remove bits out of here. Now what I'm going after is the transformer and the capacitor there anyway. The rest of it I'll just dismantle in another video. But I just want to highlight to you, in fact while well, about it, we can have the magnetron out of there too. But I just want to highlight to you the dangers of these things and why you shouldn't be doing this. Because there is a very, very strong likelihood that if you're messing around with this you could kill yourself and I don't really want my viewers killing their face what we'll do is we'll have that magnetron out of there anyway now I prefer usually to get these things out fairly quickly in any event because as I said they can be damaged too easily and I'd rather just get them out of the way to be honest with you and put away somewhere safely in a box or whatever ready for further dismantling and then the rest of it is sent off for specialist waste.